Hi, my name is Cariolis, and this is the Coriolis Effect. Most people hear about the Coriolis force at some point in their lives, whether in reference to sea currents, weather patterns, or more prosaically, in describing the direction water flows down the toilet. Hopefully today, I can shed some light on this apparent force known as the Coriolis effect and dispel some common myths surrounding it. So what is the Coriolis effect? Damn, Coriolis. I've been off all week long. I mean, every time I hit the ball, it goes off to the right. It's, it's got to be the Coriolis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn, Coriolis! So right there is my horse. His name's Skipper. Skipper Jones. About two months ago, every time I tried to plow my fields with him, he kept wanting to go off to the right. I couldn't understand why. I mean, what kind of a sense does this horse have when I'm pulling him the other way and he just wants to keep going on the right? So, you know, I'm one of those people, you know, I watch that Discovery Channel and I heard about the Coriolis Force. My wife, Martha, she thinks it's some sort of alien abduction or what have you. I do think it's a Coriolis. There's no such thing as the Coriolis horse. Move along. Hey, yeah, our coach is really weird. Um, she's got this foot that's bigger than the other one, so she's always running in circles. So we always have to train like four times as much as other teams. It's, I don't know if my teammates have noticed, but you know, every time we take off after, she keeps curving to the right, curving to the right, and she says it's something called the Coriolis Force, but we know she's just weird. No, I don't have one foot bigger than the other. So what? I can run like the wind. Try to catch me, guys. Jackie Pollock. I'm working on this piece uh, for some time. I'm working on this piece. It is so important to me that I use the rhythms of the earth. Do you know what I mean? For me, it is this force. It is this force I find in me and I bring out. I'm using this Coriolis force. It is my, uh, it is my muse. It is my inspiration. If you wish to watch, you may. Uh, you may see the beauty and the power of, of this force. Assistant, please begin with the force. Faster, please, much faster. Jackie Pollock must have the Coriolis force at the full effect. That is good. That is good. Ah, voila! I am done. Thank you. 
key witness, the misinformed public, is generally aware of the Coriolis effect, yet thoroughly inept in its true application. Here to clear some things up is my friend and mentor, Dr. Skip Berman. Hi, Skip. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so you wanted me to talk about gliders, right? Oh, no, the Coriolis effect? Uh, OK, OK, so I'm going to talk to you about the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis force is the apparent deflection of moving objects as viewed from within a rotating frame of reference, such as the Earth or merry-go-rounds. This force is sometimes referred to as a fictitious force because moving objects within the rotating frame of reference don't adhere to standard Newtonian laws of physics when viewed from outside. This equation is used to describe deflected movement within a horizontal plane and is known as the Coriolis parameter, where omega stands for the period of rotation, which is 2 pi per 24 hours, or one rotation every 24 hours here on Earth. As you can see, the equation is dependent on latitude, and because the Earth rotates counterclockwise around its axis, it results in a deflection to the right in the northern hemisphere and a deflection to the left in the southern hemisphere. Furthermore, if the Earth were to make a complete rotation around this axis in 12 hours instead of the normal 24, the amount of deflection would increase because the velocity of the rotating frame has increased. Now let's move to a demonstration of this effect. At the equator, the Earth's rotational velocity is approximately 400 meters per second, whereas the rotational velocity at the poles is essentially zero. As an object with northward velocity leaves the equator, the eastward rotational velocity of the Earth will decrease while the eastward velocity of the ball remains the same. This causes deflection to the east or to the right when viewed from within the rotating frame of reference. However, when viewed from outside the rotating reference frame, like from space, the object appears to travel in a straight line, thus reinforcing the fictitious nature of the Coriolis force. Now applying what we've learned so far to possibly the largest myth that goes along with the Coriolis effect, the toilet. We've brought on a guest to help flush out this misconception that the toilet flushes clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Take it away, Lou. Thanks, Carrie. Come this way. You will notice when the toilet flushes, the water turns in a clockwise direction. This is inconsistent with the Coriolis effect in the northern hemisphere because as water moves to drain at the center of the bowl, it is being deflected to the left. However, the force due to Coriolis is extremely small, and water direction is actually determined by a number of other forces, including pressure gradients, water input direction, and bowl geometry. On the other hand, large scale atmospheric events like winds and hurricanes are affected by Coriolis and will rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Back to you, Carrie. So, to wrap up, Coriolis is real for Earth dwellers, but it's such a small effect that it rarely affects people in their day-to-day -day life. Unless, of course, you're a physical oceanographer. 